In this video, I will show you how to get started with firewall policies for cloud managed devices. Let us head over to WatchGuard Cloud. Within the device configuration of a selected device, available through Configure and then Devices, we can see the overview of the firewall policies, and with a click into this tile, we see the firewall policies page that shows the policies in order of priority for which each connection the Firebox applies the highest priority policy that matches the source, destination and traffic type. There are three main policy groups and in addition the system policies. First run policies have higher priority than all core and last run policies. Configure a first run policy when you want to always allow or deny specific types of traffic as an exception to the core policies. Last run policies have a lower priority than all core and first run policies. A last run policy applies only to traffic that does not match configured core or first run policies. Both first run and last run policies allow or deny traffic based only on packet header information, such as source, destination, port and protocol, and these do not examine the content of the traffic and do not support content scanning services or the weblocker content filtering service. Add a first run or last run policy as an exception when you want the policy to apply before or after the core policies and you do not want to use content scanning or web locker services. Core policies allow or deny traffic based on both header information and content, have a normal priority and are used for most traffic and come in three different policy types to control which security services and policy settings are available. Let me click on add firewall policy for us to see these. An outbound core policy is for connections for an internal network to an external network, typically the internet. This policy supports all security services and you can optionally configure the policy to decrypt HTTPS traffic to enable content scanning services for HTTPS connections. An inbound core policy is for connections from an external network to an internal network, so like allowing a connection from the internet to your mail server. This policy does not support content filtering services, HTTPS decryption and therefore no content scanning for HTTPS. A custom policy includes settings appropriate for connections between private networks and has, unlike other policies, to apply to connections that originate from either a policy source or destination address. We will look at the system policies later in this video, so let us create some policies. Let us add a first run policy. Give the policy a unique name that represents its purpose. On the right of this field, you see a toggle to disable or enable the rule. You may have already recognized the red underlined settings tab to see all the shown below areas. Before we move further, let us have a quick look on what's behind the advanced tab. Here you can see some information if traffic shaping, so traffic management and QoS is configured and configure any other options for this policy you may need other than the defaults. Back in the Settings tab, select the Policy action to Allow or Deny, which I leave set to Allow. Add the traffic types, so ports and protocols that are needed. In the Search field, you can enter either the number or the name of the protocol to show the matching results on the predefined list. You can add as many ports and protocols that are necessary and will give you a smaller policy list. You can also add your custom traffic types, giving it a name and adding the according ports. When configuring policies, you want to use the concept of least privilege to limit who can use the policies, such like specify users, groups, aliases, networks or IP addresses. In this example, as allowed source, so where traffic is initiated from, I will use my already prepared alias named marketing located under my aliases. The destination is where the traffic is going, so in this example using the type FQDN. I could add more sources and destinations if needed. Further down the page, I can choose between the different options for security services, so enable or disable these, and choose between the configured actions for geolocation and content filter, which last mentioned only supports application control and not weblogger. I click on save and can see the policy under first run, giving me a summary reading from left to right. The green checkmark means the policy is set to allow. Next, I see the name, source, traffic type, destination, and what security services are enabled. Let me just quickly create some more first-run policies as examples. 
Pause the video here if you would like to read through the policies before I explain them myself. It can be a good practice. In this policy, I allow my mail server's IP address to either use the SMTP or SMTPS protocol to any external destination, for which external is commonly the Internet. In this policy, I deny all internal sources to use SMTP and SMTPS to any external destination to prevent being allowed over the below seen policy named outgoing. Yet this does not include networks defined as zone guest, which use the policy named guest. This policy is for the IT admins to have unrestricted access to troubleshoot, yet the policy is currently disabled, which you can see being greyed out. Let us look at the per default created outgoing policy, which has the same configuration menu as any core outbound policy. We can see that this policy is enabled and set to allow, so that all internal traffic can go anywhere on the internet using the listed protocols, but you may have already recognized a little difference to the before seen policy. Correct. Core outbound policies have two settings to specify how the policy applies to web traffic. Per default, this checkbox is enabled and configures the policy to apply to HTTP and HTTPS traffic on specified ports, so on ports 80 and 443. If you use a non-standard port for HTTP and HTTPS, simply edit or add additional ports. By default, HTTPS traffic is not decrypted, so check the checkbox and the Firebox decrypts HTTPS connections and scans the content with enabled security services. If the policy allows the content, the firewall then re-encrypts the HTTPS connection with a different certificate. Different certificate? Yes, the Firebox uses a self-signed certificate to re-encrypt the traffic. To avoid certificate warnings, you must distribute the certificate from the Firebox to clients on your network or import a new CA certificate that is trusted by your clients. For more information, please check into the WatchGuard Help Center, search for Download the Certificate for TLS Decryption. As seen before in the first run policy, you can add more traffic types to the list, but also remove any entry using the according trash icon. Further down the page, you can see the available security services. Let us create a core inbound policy for the internet to reach the internal mail server. I give the policy a representative name and add the traffic type SMTPS. The source is any external and the destination is the mail server, yet as type static NAT, also known as SNAT or port forwarding, since the mail server has a private IP address. SNAT actions need to be created before being able to use these in policies, which I have prepared accordingly. Details are available in the WatchGuard Help Center, search for Configure Firebox Static NAT Actions. At the bottom, we again have the for this type of policy available security services. All is set, so I click on save. Let us add a core custom policy to allow traffic between internal networks. I give the policy a name, add all ICMP as traffic type and any internal for both source and destination. You might have already seen the key difference, that unlike other policies, you can configure a custom policy to apply to connections that originate from either a policy source or destination address, which is selected by default. You can of course switch the radio button for this policy to source to destination only, so the destination is only able to reply to the traffic. One thing to mention is that you do not need to create this kind of policy for interfaces that are bridged together and interfaces in the same VLAN. Further down, we again have the per default enabled security services. All is set, so I click on save. As a tip from my side, if you encounter connections to sites not properly working through core policies, check the Firebox logs and consider to add sites to the exception list or add specific first run policies. More details to exceptions, please check into the WatchGuard Help Center, search for Add Exceptions in WatchGuard Cloud. Before we come to last run policies, let me toggle the slider to show the system policies to explain these. System policies are firewall policies that allow or deny specific types of traffic required for fireware features and WatchGuard services to operate. By default, the system policies are not shown on the firewall policies page, yet as shown can be made visible using the toggle. These policies are divided into high priority system policies and appear above the first run policies 
and low priority system policies, and these appear below the last run policies. Here you can also see the two deny policies, unhandled internal packet and unhandled external packet. Traffic will hit either of these policies when there is no other above policy matching the connection request. So unless you want to create a deny policy for a specific purpose, check your logs for these accordingly to troubleshoot failed connections that are expected to work. You cannot remove system policies and you can only disable or edit specific system policies. There may be rare cases where you need to add last run policies, as these policies apply only to traffic that do not match configured core or first run policies, or you wish to overcome one of the low priority system policies, so perhaps create a specific deny rule for reporting or limit the mobile VPN user access. Again, this really depends on your use cases. Here are some key takeaways. Choose the right type of policy as this is important to segment your traffic and allow the firebox to scan the traffic. Use first run and last run policies more as an exception to core policies, which allow or deny traffic only on header information. Use core policies for most of your traffic as these allow and deny traffic based on header information and connection content supported by the security services. Use the toggle to see the system policies for which certain policies will appear when you configure the according features and services. Keep the policy list simple and use the industry principle of least privilege. Search for firewall policies best practices in the WatchGuard Help Center to guide you. But maybe you are also interested to have a look at the courseware available in the WatchGuard Learning Center.